I do quite enjoy these uh, flat earth debates, but uh, I think it's really time to uh, separate the men from the boys and let's start looking at something that can actually be applied in the real world. And uh, a perfect example is calculating an international flight between uh, two locations in the Southern Hemisphere. So what I'm going to propose in this video is a friendly challenge to all flat earth believers to actually deliver a flight plan to me between Sydney Airport and Tahiti. Okay, now this flight plan has to show me accurate distances and it also has to show me um, accurate directions and have a number of reporting points on the way, which I'll talk about in a moment. But uh, if we just have a look at those two airports, I've given you the latitudes and longitudes and I've taken those specifically from my professional flight, um, Jefferson Flight Deck app. There's uh, Tahiti Airport and if we go to Sydney, there's the latitude and longitude of Sydney. I'll write all this in the comments so you've got uh, plenty of access to the, uh, to the information. Now, the important thing here is that you're not allowed to use Google Earth and you're not allowed to use the Great Circle Mapper because those are all based on three-dimensional mathematics, okay? They utilize uh, formulas that are based on the Earth being a sphere. So um, you can't use them for your calculation. With your flight plan, part of this challenge is to demonstrate to me that you can produce an accurate flight plan using two-dimensional mathematics, okay? You're telling us that the Earth is flat. You need to show us a map and you need to show us two-dimensional mathematics for calculating an accurate flight plan, okay? Now, just remember, all over the world, there are aircraft flying constantly. Thousands of aircraft are using great circle mathematics to fly and the flight plans work. Okay, so what uh, Flat Earth needs to do, if you want people to take you seriously, is produce workable flight plans based on two-dimensional mathematics. Okay, I'm not going to ask you to do anything that I'm not able to do myself. So what I'm going to do is just run you through some of the little uh, flight planning programs using raw math that I developed many years ago. And uh, in fact, over 20 years ago, I used to just love writing programs in BASIC and then later on in Excel, and I'll just explain some of the ones that I've developed. But if we have a look at um, Great Circle Mapper, now remember, you can't use this for the purpose of this challenge because this is actually based on spherical math, and I'll prove that. But uh, Great Circle Mapper calculates a distance of um, 3,308 nautical miles between Sydney and Tahiti. Okay, and the initial heading is 089. Now that's fine. Now if we have a look at the Great Circle calculations, there's a section here in the uh, FAQ that just explains how it does it. Okay, down here it says, how does Great Circle Mapper calculate distances and paths? Okay, it uses a formula developed by Thaddeus Vincenti. Okay, this is the Vincenti formula and it uses the WGS84 reference ellipsoid. So it's spherical based math, so you can't use it for the purpose of your challenge, okay? Now this Vincenti formula can calculate distances accurately anywhere on Earth to within millimeters, okay? And that's why we can produce flight plans that just work perfectly. For the purpose of my own formulas, I've just relied on a much simpler have a sign. Now the only real difference there, um, is that the have a sign assumes a completely spherical Earth, but the Vincenti takes into account the ablateness of the Earth, okay? So for the purpose of my flight plans, I've just always used the have a sign. It's close enough, it's within half a percent accuracy, and it's certainly enough just to, uh, to verify the distances and the tracks. Now, if we have a look at, let's just come back here. I'm just gonna have a look at a very simple great circle distance Calculator. This is just one I produced recently to um, just to show a couple of demonstrations. And all, all you do is you put in the latitude and longitude of the first location and then the latitude and longitude of the second location and it gives you the distances. Okay, so it's showing between Sydney and Tahiti. It's 3,303 nautical miles. And uh, the Haversine formula is basically converted to look like that in Excel. Okay, now what's of relevance here, and this is the whole crux of how the thing works, is this 3440, okay, because that's the radius of the Earth in nautical miles, 
okay so by adopting the radius of the earth it gives us a correct distance now i've actually flown this uh, route many times and uh, i can confirm that that distance is actually correct okay the next step which gets a little bit more complicated now this is a excel program i wrote more than 20 years ago it's a similar type of setup but what it allows me to do is input point 0.1 latitude and longitude, point 0.2 latitude and longitude, and then determine uh, a leg distance because 3,300 miles, you don't really just fly that in a straight line without any en route reporting. So what I've decided to put in here is a 500 nautical mile leg distance. So what it does, it creates what is called waypoints every 500 miles and it gives you the latitude and longitude of each of those waypoints. It shows how many nautical miles to go from each of that point. And then years ago, 20 years ago, I had an old Apollo GPS and it could um, basically fly me direct from one point to another, but I couldn't insert waypoints. Now, what I actually did is I adopted this little Excel calculator so that I could basically copy that whole string of text and put it into another text editor and then import it into my handheld GPS and it would then create a route that gave me a great circle route plus reporting points every 500 miles or, or really whatever, whatever distance I specified up here. But for the sake of this exercise, let's just use 500 nautical miles, okay? Now, just to show you how that works, I've taken all these Latin longs for these calculated uh, waypoints and I've plotted them in my ForeFlight app. Okay, so we've got the flight from Sydney to Tahiti, and then I've plotted each of these calculated waypoints every 500 miles in this program also. And there they are up there. Okay, and you'll see that what it actually looks like on the globe is a straight line between Sydney and Tahiti and every 500 miles I've got a reporting point so that's actually what we want it just makes it much easier we can update our logs we can report to air traffic control our position so what you need to do is you need to produce a flight plan that gives me the accurate distance between Sydney and Tahiti then you have to give me at least five en route waypoints give me the precise latitude and longitude, give me the course from each of those points, and then we're going to look at how we can apply that to the fuel calculations of the aircraft. And again, this is another program I wrote years and years ago. I was just right into this stuff back then, but uh, this is before we could get online computerized flight planning and uh, I really just used to write my own. But just for the sake of uh, this exercise, we're going from Sydney to Tahiti. I've got the waypoints, Sydney, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then Tahiti. The true airspeed is 470 knots. We'll keep it simple. We'll just forget about wind altogether. The heading, I've put all that in. Don't worry too much about that. I haven't actually adjusted for uh, magnetic heading there. So let's just focus on the distances and the times and the fuel flow of the aircraft. Let's say it's based on 3,000 pounds per hour. 3,000 pounds per hour, so the total distance is 3,303 nautical miles, 422 minutes. Now, what we're going to do, again, keeping it as simple as possible, we're just going to use a reserve fuel figure of 60 minutes, so that's um, 3,000 pounds. So the fuel required for the flight, the subtotal there, is 21,083 pounds, plus the fixed reserve, gives us a fuel required of 24,088 pounds. Let's just top that up to 25,000 pounds on the aircraft, and that will get us uh, into our destination with 60 minutes fuel remaining, plus a bit extra. Now on this actual uh, calculation, I also have things such as uh, critical points and point of no return. The critical point is the point at which, uh, if an emergency occurs before this point, you go back to the, uh, the origin, if the emergency occurs after this point, you're faster to continue to the destination. The point of no return, once you've gone past this point, 
you cannot make it back to your origin. So if you just have a look at how that works, if I just put a bit more fuel in there, let's just say we put that up to 30,000 pounds. Okay, the point of no return currently 1723 nautic miles. If I put it up to 30,000 pounds, you'll see that point of no return becomes a lot further. So it depends how much fuel you've got on board as to how far you can go and then return back to your origin. But uh, like I said, don't worry too much about that. I'm not going to get into uh, too much detail. I realise you're not all pilots. So all I want is just the most basic information. The distance and a number of waypoints every 500 miles on that route and give me the latitude and longitude of those waypoints and the direction out of each one, okay? And that's what we need to do. So uh, over to you guys, let's see what you've got. So I just wanted to uh, add one last bit that I forgot in the original video, and that's just that I plotted this uh, route from Sydney to Tahiti on Google Earth Pro, and that shows a distance of 3,307 nautical miles. Now remember, this uses uh, circular math that takes into account the ablateness of the Earth, my Haversign formula doesn't, that's why there's just a couple of miles difference. But as I said, it's uh, better than half a percent of accuracy between the two. So remember, for your um, challenge, you can't use Google Earth because it uses spherical math. You have to show me a flight plan and you have to show me the two-dimensional mathematics that you have used to calculate it. Because if the Earth is flat, it should be possible to do flight plans using two-dimensional math. If you can't produce a flight plan using two-dimensional math, that raises a huge question as to whether the Earth is actually flat, doesn't it? So, over to you guys. Let's see what you've got.